Hi, this is Eric Sloof over at ntpro.nl and in this video I'm going to show you an awesome feature regarding vSphere 5 and it has to do with vMotion over multiple network adapters. And uh, Frank Briggs uh, Patterson, he uh, is the one who has written the initial article using multiple vMotion adapters multiple network adapters for vMotion and uh, he's a fellow VCI so he's uh, delivering VMware training courses just like me and what he did uh, in his article is awesome he explained how to set up multiple kernel port groups uh, to be able to use more bandwidth for uh, vMotion it's possible with 10 gigabit it's also possible when you do uh, a special ether channel but uh, in vSphere 5 there's also a possibility to route the vMotion traffic over multiple physical network adapters. So this article explains very good how everything must be configured. Uh, it's done on a standard switch and in my video I'm going to show you the same but then on a distributed virtual switch. And what you see here is a great graphic and the graphic shows you that vMotion over two physical network cards is indeed much faster and he is topping the two gigabit so that's cool uh, so many thanks to frank uh, i hope to see him at the vm world in copenhagen and then we will meet up and uh, speak about vmotion over multiple network adapters i also have posted an article on my website regarding this uh, new feature and vmware has uh, released uh, a new technical white paper and this technical technical white paper is is a perfect description of all the new features and the do's and don'ts and uh, what to expect and how to configure it so if you're interested in some tests and uh, you're you want to do a deep dive on vMotion the architecture the performance and the best practices then you have to uh, uh, download this technical white paper so let's put the proof to the punning uh, let's create some noise let's look at our configuration so what i did was that i uh, i'm running vsphere 5 my vcenter server is configured with uh, a distributed switch so when i'm going to networking i created a new distributed switch and on the new distributed switch i created two virtual machine port groups two dv port groups distributed virtual port groups and um, those port groups are both used by the kernel port groups for vMotion. So to be able to bind a port group to a DV uplink port, you have to place the different VM, uh, VMK files on different port groups. Otherwise, you cannot bind a port group to a DV uplink port. But I'm going to show you later on. So this is what I uh, configured when I'm going to the settings of this port group. And I'm going to, uh, going to the settings regarding teaming and fill over. You see that this port group has an active uplink adapter, DV uplink 1, and the other port group has an uh, active uplink adapter, DV uplink 2. Yes, DV uplink 2, and DV uplink 1 is the standby adapter, so in case of uh, a network failure, you still have vMotion traffic uh, going through your network but on one adapter only. So there is full tolerance, there is redundancy, and we have a big bandwidth bec because we can use both adapters uh, at the same time when we are vMotioning virtual machines from one host to another. So the switch is configured with two DV uplink ports. So every ESX host has to contribute two physical network cards to the switch. And when I'm going to my individual ESX servers, and uh, I'm hopping over to host and clusters and I'm going to ESX4. Then at the configuration network part, you will see uh, at the vSphere distributed switch that the two port groups are created. I also created two VM kernel port groups, 10.0.0.2 and 10.0.0.5. And, and the switch is configured with two physical network cards. The physical network cards are connected to my uh, to my gigabit switch, uh, a Cisco switch with eight ports and uh, both, are, both are on the same switch. So this is 
con uh, everything is configured correctly right here. When I'm hopping over to my other ESX host, there's the same situation. I'm only using different physical adapters. I'm using uh, adapter one and two instead of three and four. I've created two separate VM kernel port groups. And when you are going to create kernel port groups, don't forget to put in a mark. Use this kernel port group, use this adapter for uh, vMotion. So you have to enable this setting on both the kernel port groups. This is the point where you link the kernel port group, the virtual adapter, to the distributed port group. And the distributed port group is teamed with the DV uplink port. So that's why this kernel port group goes through. This distributed port group, the distributed port group is linked when we are going to networking. Uh, the distributed port group is teamed with the DV uplink port. And the DV uplink port is connected to the physical network card on the ESX host. So it's a bit complicated, but that's the way how it works with distributed switches. A distributed virtual port group is never directly connected to a VMNIC because this switch doesn't have to want to do anything with, with, with all the local things on the ESX host like physical network cards and everything. So uh, once again, when I'm going back to my ESX host, VMNIC 1, ESX 4 is connected to DV uplink 1. DV uplink 1 is bound to DV port group 2 and DV port group 2 is bound to VM kernel port group 1. And DV port group 3 is bound to VM kernel port group 0 with 10, 10, 10, 10, 0, 0, 1. And you can also see the orange line right here. You see that it is correctly mapping to DV uplink 2 and DV uplink 2 is connected to via NIC2. Let's do the same at ESX4L. So this kernel port group, VMK2 with 10.0.0.5 is created on DV port group 2. DV port group 2 is bound to DV uplink 1 and DV uplink 1 is configured with VMNIC2. And the same goes for VMK1, 10.0.0.2. And you see the orange line going straight to the correct network cards because VMNIC3 is bound to DV uplink 2. DV uplink 2 is connected to DV port group 3. And DV port group 3 is connected to 10.0.0.2. So everything is configured. I have enabled the adapters for uh, vMotion. And if I'm going to do a vMotion, we can see that vMotion goes very fast. So what I did is that I've configured a virtual machine. The virtual machine is uh, running on NFS storage, my, my iOmega iX2, until Jet Sackets will provide me with a PX6, PX6 maybe, sometime, Christmas, Jet. And uh, it's running on shared storage, and this virtual machine is configured with 4 gigabit, gigabyte of memory. And when I'm going to the resource allocation of this virtual machine, you will see that I have a lot of shared memory. So you can imagine this memory is all uh, gained back with transparent page sharing. It's probably zero. I only have 40 MB active and uh, this virtual machine is doing nothing. So when I'm going to migrate this virtual machine to uh, the other host and I'm giving it high priority, then it will go very fast. So migrating the virtual machine and although it's four gigabytes, you will see that it is vMotioned within 10 seconds. Uh, and that has to do with the fact that the virtual machine is idling. There is nothing happening in the virtual machine. So it's very easy to, tra to transfer the, the memory from uh, ESXL to ESXR. When I'm going to look at the network statistics, uh, you will see that uh, when I'm switching to networking, there, there should be a little peak right here. but uh, you don't need two adapters to vMotion one virtual machine. I think two adapters will be nice when you are vMotioning vir multiple virtual machines at the same time. So let's do the same again. And let's take a look at what happens if I vMotion a virtual machine. And we take a peek with ESX stop to the physical network adapters. So there it goes. I already initiated the session with 
uh, Putty to uh, one of my ESX hosts and I'm monitoring the network traffic and what you will see is that this is the traffic for switch zero and here is the vMotion traffic on uh, VMLink 2 and VMLink 3 also. Uh, so that's nice. VMotion diverts your machine from one host to the other. What I also did is that I've, uh, I'm running the scrutinizer. And the scrutinizer is really cool because the scrutinizer can be used to capture NetFlow traffic. So what I did at my ESX environment, uh, at the networking part, is that I've enabled NetFlow on this distributed switch. It's very easy. You go to the NetFlow tab. You put in the IP address of your NetFlow analyzer your netflow collector you put in a port where the connector is listening and you can put in an ip address which is used as a, a sender address so you can recognize which distributed switch is sending out all the netflow information and um, when it's up and running the scrutinizer then you can go to you can create lots of reports but i just want to see some figures and when you select the ungrouped uh, part and you do the show interfaces, then you will see the IP addresses of my distributed switch. And you see some interfaces, and when you select an interface, you can create a 24-hour report. And let's see if there are some. Yeah, you see it right here. This is my vMotion coming by on the statistics. How cool is that? 10, 0, 6, 10, 0, 5. So, the scrutinizer can also be used. So let's make it a little bit harder for our environment to vMotion the virtual machine from one host to another. Let's go to virtual machines and templates and then uh, go to uh, my uh, vMotion virtual machine. And what I actually can do is that I'm able to run performance software within my virtual machine. And during this test, a lot of memory will be written to uh, to the memory of the virtual machine. So in this way, I'm able to put a little bit stress on vMotion. And uh, maybe vMotion will take a little bit longer than the 10 seconds we saw earlier. So uh, I'm enabling, I'm initiating a vMotion action. And I'm going to stress the system by running some memory tests. And... I don't think it's really feeling my stress, but it takes a little bit longer. We can also check if there is a little bit more network traffic during the vMotion migration. Okay, it's already on the other ESX host. Let's go to performance. Let's go to network. And you see that the prior vMotion wasn't that hard, but this one is really going through the roof. So the more the more data that is changed into your virtual machine, the harder it will be to vMotion your virtual machine. If the data that is changed in your virtual machine is too much, your virtual machine will even be slowed down to give the vMotion process uh, the opportunity to complete your vMotion migration. So uh, a short recap, if you want to configure multiple adapters for vMotion, it can be done at a standard switch or a distributed switch. When you do it at a distributed switch, create your switch, uh, give it a multiple physical network cards, so multi multiple configure multiple DV uplink ports. In my case, I've configured two DV uplink ports, so every ESX host has to contribute two physical network cards. And create per kernel port group a DV port group, so for every uh, uh, virtual adapter you need to create a separate uh, DV port group because the DV port group is bound to the DV uplink port. When I'm going to my ESX host you can even see it uh, a little bit better when what you see right here is that VMLink 2 is bound to DV uplink 1, DV uplink 1 is bound to DV port group 2, DV port group is created on the distributed vMotion switch and the kernel port group is created on this, uh, on this DV port group. Don't forget to enable vMotion on your port groups. And don't forget to do the nice trick with the teaming and fill over. So DV port group 2 is, uh, DV port group 2 is, has an active adapter DV uplink 1. And DV port group 
3 has an active adapter and the active adapter is DV uplink 2. So in this case they're redundant and they have uh, the bandwidth they need. So many thanks to my friend, my fellow VCI Frank, who uh, created a real cool article. Keep your eyes on his website vfrank.org. Eric Sloof is signing off. Have fun with vMotioning on multiple adapters. Bye bye.